The following documents and recordings are the 17th instalment in a compilation detailing the events of the repair team sent to Outpost Freestead, consisting of Dr. Rosa De La Torre, Walter Heath, Graham Kasner, Dr. Karina Schumacher Weiss, and Jonas Thorison. In the winter months, Gau storms in Svalbard can reach wind speeds of 130 km per hour. Accompanied by or following snowfall, such storms can reduce visibility dramatically, more so in the winter months of the polar night. During these storms, travel is not advised. The White Bolt Previous instalment, Dr. Rosa de la Torre, Graham Kasner, and Jonas Thorison determined no clear way out of the town beneath the ice and decided to descend into the catacombs in hopes of discovering a path back to the bunker. This first recording is the continuation of a previous journal entry from Dr. Rosa de la Torre. Es casi el final de mi guardia. Es casi el momento de adentrarnos en las cuevas. A ver si conseguimos de alguna manera de salir de aquí. Esta pequeña fortaleza is nearing the end of my watch. Nearly time for us to head down into the caves in hopes of finding our way out of here. This little stone fortress of ours will be our tomb if we wait much longer. You can drink melted ice, but you can't eat rocks. Even the oil lamp is running low, as though it was keeping time. Writing helps distract from the hunger. I've been studying the paper we found in the Finnish soldier's bag. It's delicate, something that won't last long agitated by heavily gloved hands and little tact. I think it may be a map. I'll have to confirm it when we get down there, but I believe it's the catacombs. If the spiraling line represents the stairs down, and the lines are halls and the circles are rooms, I may be right. Or I may be crazy and holding on to scribbles in foolish hope. I like to hope. I hate to hope. I hope there is food in that can. Our bags are heavy. Everything is still packed for the journey across the snowfields. We can't leave them behind, but with every haul we use more dwindling energy. It's a long walk in these conditions to reach Nielsund. It could be a long time lost down in those caves as well. I know how this works. I've been in shit situations before. Holding on to hope and licking clean the chocolate wrapper for every crumb. Hope is for me now. For the living. Graham is still asleep. He needs it. His stitches are holding well, but he's been running on anger and adrenaline for days. I'll wake him up soon. And maybe we'll eat enough to make the deep well in my stomach fade. I've saved some space on my phone. A lot, actually. I want to record tomorrow. The caves messed everything up last time. But maybe the further we go, the less interference there may be. Makes no sense, but it doesn't mean I won't try. Based on some information Jonas gave me, Sija Group thinks we have enough food for another eight days out here. Maybe if we can wait it out, they'll just come for us. But if they don't, we'll just wither away until we've no energy left to make the journey back. Well, <sighs> time to wake them up. Either way, we need to get out of these caves. The following is a recording from the audio recorder of Mr. Walter Heath, now in the possession of Mr. Jonas Thorison. Are you recording? I was going to record. Would you like me to switch it off? No, that's fine. As long as one is running. Uh, see anything while I was asleep? No, nothing. Some rocks settled, that's all. Good, that's all we want. I have something interesting to show you, though. Regarding? The sketch from the soldier. I think it's a map. Show me. Here, let's assume this represents the spiral staircase in the theater. So it starts down here already, not from the hatch. Yes. There is no reason to think the Finnish soldier even came through our cave to begin with. But look, 
Here. The scribbles. Well, yes, but it almost looks like a skull. Two eyes, long snout, and it's in this big circle, which could be the chamber. It's a possibility. Well, look at all these possible paths. One of them must lead to our cave. Look, some even move up, higher than the spiral stairs. If, if this is a map, the rising could also mean going right, and the falling mean going left. Yeah, there's no compass drawn. The compass we found in the pack was cracked. Well, we can make the comparison once we're down there. If this is a map, and if that means up, there may be a path out of here. Lots of if statements here. It's our only option, regardless. True. Let's eat. Already working on it. Let's see what's in this cap. What is it? We have some energy bars, and the water in here is clean. I think it's peaches. Food. Syrupy, sweet peaches. Looks fine. Smells fine. Ah. Oh. Cuts like jelly. Near freezing. As long as it's safe to eat, I'm starved. I wish there was coffee. A whole pot just for me. Split everything up. I'll keep a look outside. When you're done, we'll switch. A map. Too good to be true. You may be right, but it wastes no time to check. We are already headed down there. Are you feeling better? Are you sure I can't check your hand and leg? I'm fine. They're a bit sore, but that's to be expected. And I'd rather not lose the body heat I've built up. Fine. Just tell me if you begin to feel any pain or lose feeling. Mm. Oh, esto está buenísimo. La mejor comida sin sabor del mundo. Do you think we will find him down there? Walter? Walter? Or the soldier? Maybe others? Karina? I don't know, but they aren't what we're looking for. Right. Graham, come eat. I'll watch the place. <sighs> oh, I'm still hungry. I could eat a whole buffet, no problem. American style. <laughs> I'd stuff myself with muffins and coffee. A tower of pancakes. <gasps> que fue eso? Do you hear that? More rocks? Yes and no. So... A heart. Rosa! Fuck! Jonas, stay here! Well, fuck. The following is a short note in a flip-top notepad found in the bag of Mr. Jonas Thorison. And the bean Rosa Leo Puto Kasner Altana. My hand is lost. It must be. Rosa ran out of here when Kastner followed. I took the opportunity to peel back my glove liner and check my arm. I couldn't. Some opaque slime strung between my black glove and the thin sliver of graying skin I could see. I could use my hand, but every movement slips through some unseen pool of organic paste. I feel... I can hear it. The slosh. The others can't. It's not as close to them. They don't know. Kastner and Rosa returned together soon after she bolted off. She looked furious. The face of a fighter left on the bench for too long. Kastner sat back down to eat without words. And Rosa stood watch over the door, armed with a shotgun. She said she heard the heart. And sure enough, when she looked into the theater, a new box sat on the table. We know Walter is dead now. It had no reason not to place the heart out. No more time for fooling us when it can just taunt and threaten. It's smart. It's been here so long. It's waiting for us. The following recording comes from the next file on the recorder in the possession of Jonas Thorison. So it was there. The heart. Fresh and still beating. Fuck. Are you ready? We need to get going. Rosa, we're going. We're packed up, but 
We are heading down those stairs into a whole new world of possible shit. Take some time to breathe. Your the longer cousin. we wait, the longer we're doing nothing to get out of here. The longer that thing thinks it will have our hearts in stone boxes displayed in that sick place. Do you Let think we have it. enough light for down there? We have plenty of chemical lights left and headlamps if they'll work at all. And this for fire. Jonas, what are you doing? Mumbling helps no one. Neither does arguing, Rosa. Please, calm down. <sighs> we should go. And remember, when we reach the anatomical theater, stay quiet. Down the hill, into the dark. Now, we are going to bring that creepy phrasing ship to a stop. There is a large section in the audio where the recorder picked up nothing but rampant static and spikes of which could be best described as high-pitched feedback. The next recording comes from 15 minutes later, when the disruption of the recording device appears to end. Are you sure we should not check the skeletal collection room for water? Surely it makes sense. The light is flickering. Oh, that oil. Now, the thing that we can see Now, it can take the map. Put the map back. Not here. Not in the cave hall. Wait until we find another room. I should have checked in the oil room. Any longer breathing that beer may have killed me. Stop. I hear something. A heart. No. Water. Moving water. Lapping. Waves, maybe. This way. Stay close. Yes, give me that axe. What is that? That, Rosa, is an Arctic lamprey, and we're going to eat it. Uh, another one, right over there. The pool is filled with them. Good. Would this be the way out? No. Damn. Not unless death is your way out. Are these edible? They look asqueroso. They are. It won't be the best fish you've had, but it will fill your stomach. Fatty suckers, literally. <clears throat> Never seen them this large before, or in small part. Rosa, take the shotgun. Jonas, the emergency stove is in my pack. Set it up. This room looks good enough, even if it's damp. If we sat down here for a bit, we can look at the possible map Rosa has and cook these. Yes, I'm starved. It's disgusting. Are you sure it's food? Just watch the entry. It'll be food once it's cooked. It's the more appetizing now, without the heads. More so when cooked. Yes, and ready for that. Jonas, could you keep an eye out? I want to view the map now we're down here. Now that we're down here, it may not even be a map. How's your leg? Fine, fine. It's my hand. Landed on it. Bruised up fast. Rosa, check it yet? No, it's just bruised. How's the fish? Small stove. Cooks slow. 
These are bigger than others. Fatter. More for us, then. I think it's a map. I think we're here. This circle room with the smaller circle in it. One line coming out. What about the oil cavern? Or the cavern with the skeletons? If we're here, and that's the cave we came down, between us and the spiral stairs, then yes, both are here, though the dimensions are truncated. Anyway, drawn out of here? Well, there are many possibilities. This can't be everything down here either. Just what they explored. First three lamprey are caught and cooked. Well, cooked enough. Oh, I didn't think it would smell so good. I'll eat first, Jonas. Then I'll take over what. Think you can cook? Fish. It's the lifeblood of my people. Cook me some, please. It's too difficult to understand. Where does this line go? Did he investigate it? Does it lead nowhere? Ah, uh, you will think more clearly on a full stomach. Eat, eat. The recording continues for some time as they eat, capture several more lampreys, cook, examine the map, and rest on full stomachs. The next recording comes from the phone of Mr. Jonas Thorison during their period of rest. Rosa svaf ekki vel á þann svo við erum að taka aðra pásu í fiskihellinum svo hún getur kvílt sig með eitthvað um. Rosa didn't sleep that well earlier, so we've taken a rest in the cavern of fish to eat and let her rest briefly on her full stomach. I know we haven't been down here for more than three hours, but this dark place pulls the drive of life out of your very bones. But I will continue. I will see my girls again. I've eaten three or four full lampreys. Fatty, heavy meat. Delicious. Anything would be at this point, though. We ate as much as we could, beyond satisfaction, as it would be very difficult to bring any with us. I'm keeping watch as Rosa sleeps and Graham takes a bit of a breather. His leg wounds hurts worse than he lets on, but he's not going to complain. My hand, though, hurts like a bitch. I checked it again. I could see my veins have gone dark up my arm, and the slimed skin sags. Thankfully, my good hand still works fine. This was a simple assignment. It all went to shit. None of this was supposed to happen this way. I'm angry. Furious. Frustrated. And there's little I want to do but wake up from this nightmare. And eat. How am I still hungry? Fuck. I just want to be home. Mm hmm? It was bubbling beneath the water moments ago. The cave is perhaps just below four meters in length and a relatively fine circle. Our little bubbling sea hole is in the middle, deep abyss of ugly fish and salty, chilled water. I don't know how deep it goes, but it must reach the sea eventually. It even looks like a tidal current the way it tosses itself up and down on the rocks. The bubbling stopped. An air bubble breaking free of a rock or a fish below, perhaps? But what I cannot explain away is the glow that came from the water for the merest of moments. It faded just as quickly as it appeared. Graham did not notice it as he had set about beheading more fish. How either of us are still hungry is a mystery. When do I get to take a shit? Favarita. Did you hear that? Yeah, it's gone. Was it from the cave? I couldn't tell. Come cook these. I'll stand watch. Should we wake her? Not yet. It could be nothing. Could be something very, very bad. Your phone's still on. Mm, yes, I, I know. Thank you. This concludes those documents related to the team's descent into the catacombs beneath the theatre once again, searching for a way out of the caves. This completes the 17th collection of information regarding the repair team at Outpost Freestead. The White Vault 